uh, uh, what? Okay, so when so the question was related to events, the event construct in any logic, and um, where how does it relate to actions, et cetera? So so the notion of 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 actions, um, you know, state and actions that change state and rules that govern those actions. That's a very general notion that applies in agent-based modeling. It also tends to apply in other areas of dynamic modeling, like like stock and flow modeling. Um, uh, although we're we're dealing there with with state um, that's articulated, say, in in compartments and and our state our stocks and and we have actions that change them continually over over time. Within uh, agent-based models. Um, uh, there's a class of agent-based models that, as we said last time in, in previous class, that that evolve according to discrete state, as discrete time rather. And then there are some that evolve according to uh, continuous time. And continuous time, um, you know, there's a very important notion of an event, like an event, uh, you know, triggers at certain times. Um, uh, there are events that occur. It's, it's called continuous time discrete event. There are occurrences that happen at certain times where a person changes state or sends a message or, or you know, a, or is born or dies or, you know, uh, arrives at a location or embarks on a journey or what have you. These are all examples of what are called are conceptually events. And, and I, last time in my, previous class, I had introduced an event scheduler or an event schedule that sort of showed those events over time. And they're in some sort of continuous time. And sometimes they occur really quick. And sometimes there's long periods between them. Those are conceptual events. Now, in any logic, there is a construct that's actually called a, a sort of a reified thing in any logic. Um, that is called uh, an event. And that event is represented in any logic um, explicitly as something in the palette. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this um, because I think it's somewhat confusing for some of my students. Um, so, so here's a, any logic model and okay, we'll, well, we can find it in each of these models, I think. Here we go. Um, how about the the supermarket model? We're gonna go 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 here. Here's the supermarket model, and here's an event here. Um, uh, there's another event in the model I was just looking at, the GDM model. We're gonna have uh, events at the main level here. Um, now these events are very particular. Um, things. They happen to be named event, but I actually disagree with that naming. I don't think they should be named event. I, I believe that they should be named event schedule uh, or uh, or scheduled events. Um, they allow you to have an action happen uh, either once um, if this were occurs once or cyclically on a certain schedule. And it basically schedules when certain events will, when certain things will happen. This is not all events. This is, this is, this is a way that you can make certain things happen with a certain cyclic uh, uh, frequency, a certain period or it can occur with a certain rate or at a certain condition if something happens or trigger this event. It's a way of establishing things to happen in the future at certain times. And there's another variant of it called the dynamic event, which is more advanced and I'm not gonna get into, but which is even more flexible. But th this event construct, is is used to set up things to happen in the future that will do something that will undertake an action 
and, and this undertakes an action. In this case, it's a kind of administrative action or epiphenomenal action. It, it puts some things in a histogram to show, to show how many people have had how many kids right now or something like that. Um, you could go see what it is in the histogram, but you know, it, it, it basically provides some summary of, of the model to date. And you can kind of go see, see folks up, up here. So cumulative cases, prevalence of diabetes, how many episodes of diabetes there have been among high SES, uh, this is gestational, uh, diabetes here among high SES groups or among low SES groups. And you can see low SES groups tend to have more occurrences of gestational diabetes and, and you know, um, a number of years uh, people have spent obese among low SES and high SES. Um, so that's generating these kind of uh, types of outputs. Um, but there's a lot of events, like the vast majority of events in the model, conceptual events in a more general sense, are, are not occurring in these things. They're occurring in lots of other places. They're occurring like when you have a person and this person is going back and forth, you know, they become pregnant and you know, they develop dysglycemia and then they deliver the baby or or you know, as their physical activity is changing, or as they um, go from a normal diabetic state to a pre-diabetic state, or as they pass away, or as their weight changes, all of those are associated with events. And in fact, when people interact by doing what's called sending each other messages, which we'll be soon learning about in class, um, those are all events. And um, events in general, um, you know, are, are kind of the pulse of the model. That's when things happen. And, you know, generally speaking, those events trigger actions. Because the event happens, it, it undertakes some change to the model state, to the model situation. And, and what I'm saying is, while there is an event construct like, like this one, don't get caught up in that being that's where the events live. No, no, no. This is just like some events that I want to, I want certain things to happen periodically. And in this case, they're actually not particularly modifying model state. They're kind of updating a bunch of graphs. Most events are going to be living um, kind of in the back and forth with state charts and with stock and flow models and with agents sending each other messages you know, indicating social support uh, or clinical intervention. And, um, and, and those will be uh, associated with actions that are changing the state. So wherever you see these sort of things going between, th uh, between states here, I mean, that, that reflects an action that can change from a person from here to here. And, you know, it's triggered by certain conditions and, um, it's uh, uh, it's got uh, an event associated with it. it. This will fire off at some underlying event. But you know, in general, I don't think people have to think like any logic modelers. It's not that like I don't think it's that helpful to worry a lot. Like oh, an event is like like every event that's happening. It's it. it like that's generally the event schedule is kind of behind the model. You don't have to worry about it that much generally. Maybe performance, you will have to sometimes worry about it, but I wouldn't approach a model trying to think about what are all the events possible because they can, they can come in all these different sorts, updating graphs and, you know, computing statistics and kind of people dying and people being born and people changing state and it, it gets really confusing if you try to consider all events. Instead, I would approach each piece of the model, like, okay, this is a state chart, and people transition from here to here with a certain chance per unit time. Or if a physician sends them a message, you know, they will go to this other state, et cetera. That, that is how I'd, I'd approach it. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get all tied up with kind of 
all possible events because they are they are legion, they are profuse, they are they are very large in number and varied. I don't know if that helps at all, but that event construct is a bit of a red herring because it's a you know it's it's really saying I want to schedule a bunch of actions in the future for my own bidding. Maybe that's confusing, but I hope it it helps a little bit. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah.